Incredible Inventions, written by Nick Griffiths. Imagine life without. They may not be the most ingenious inventions, but imagine life without them. Born and bred. To many people, it's the greatest invention in the history of the world, hence the saying, the best thing since sliced bread. The brilliantly simple idea originated in the United States around 1928 and gradually caught on. A man called Garfield Weston gets the credit for the slice of life, but it wasn't until the invention of the pop-up toaster in the 1950s that really got their teeth. But it wasn't until the invention of the pop-up toaster in the 1950s that people really got their teeth into the idea. Sliced bread. Hello, Dolly. Barbara Millicent Roberts, or Barbie, as she came to be known, first hit the stores in March 1959. She was invented by housewife Ruth Handler, whose husband just happened to own a toy firm. Now almost $500 million is spent on Barbie products every year. The Real Thing A medicine maker from Georgia created the world's favorite carbonated drink back in 1886. Dr. John Pemberton was busy making a new medicine when he discovered the recipe tasted good enough to drink. His mix of coca leaves, cola nuts, and secret ingredients was Coca-Cola, originally meant to be a cure for hangovers. The right type. Not surprisingly, the inventor of correction fluid was a hopeless typist. Beth Nesmith Graham first covered up her mistakes with white paint in 1951. A few years and a few extra chemicals later, liquid paper started to make its mark. Lucky number. Clive Sinclair, radio salesman from London, invented the portable calculator in 1972. His first model was 20 times smaller than previous number crunchers and sold for $125. $125. However, his number was up a few years later when American and Japanese competitors multiplied cheaper and smarter alternatives. Cool. Yet another American invention, the Popsicle, was first sold in 1923 by a Californian named Frank Epperson. At first he was known as the Epsicle, then the Popsicle. New Waves The TV and Radio Revolution Once it was discovered that radio waves constantly travel silently and invisibly around us, it was just a matter of tuning into them. Back in 1864, a Scottish scientist named James Clerk Maxwell came up with a brainwave about radio waves. He claimed that magnetic particles in the air could carry electrical signals, but it took until 1895 before the Italian inventor Guglielmo Marconi turned scientific theory into something that actually worked. Previously, messages had been sent through wires. Marconi discovered it was possible to transmit signals through the air. He then tested out his wireless apparatus in his father's attic. This transmission was to change history. Even though his radio signal traveled just 30 feet, it was a giant leap for technology. Guglielmo Marconi demonstrates the first transatlantic wireless in 1901. This strange contraption sparked a radio revolution. Families in the 1930s and 1940s used to spend whole evenings sitting around the radio. Radio waves travel at the speed of light. That means they can go around the world in the time it takes to blink. Sound and vision. Using principles like those of radio, TV has become one of the world's most important inventions. Not only is it great fun to watch, but it has enabled people all around the world to communicate with each other, and it enables us to play video games. What more could we ask for? So, hearty thanks to John Logie Baird, a Scottish engineer. In 1925, he demonstrated the first TV image using an old electric motor, parts of a radio, and two bicycle light lenses. Record attempt. In 1956, an American company called Ampex devised a way of recording TV signals on magnetic tape. 
Before that, all broadcasts had to be live, even commercials. Like radio, it took a while to get television design exactly right. In 1929, a British broadcast of singer Gracie Fields went out picture first. By the time the sound arrived, she had finished the song and her face had disappeared from the screen. Imagine watching all your favorites on a whopping television like the one demonstrated here by John Logie Baird. How television works. 1. The antenna picks up radio waves from the TV station transmitter. These are converted into signals. 2. The signals are turned into streams of electrons that are fired by electron guns at the screen. There is one gun for each color, red, blue, and green. When the electrons hit the screen, they make a glow forming a picture. A new picture is produced 30 times a second. Electronic circuits control the brightness of the individual colors and the overall brightness of the picture. The pictures on the TV screen are made up of thousands of tiny red, blue, and green dots. Your eye blends them together so that you see a complete picture. Spectacular! Pictures hit a new dimension. When you look at a picture on a page, it appears flat. That's because it's two-dimensional. But with 3D photography, pictures have really taken shape. Sir Charles Wheatstone created the first three-dimensional pictures in 1830 when his drawings were viewed through a device called a stereoscope. They appeared to leap out of the paper. But it was the stereo camera that revolutionized the industry. It was introduced in 1856 and allowed people to take 3D photographs that could be viewed through special glasses. But by the 1950s, some filmmakers were using stereo movie cameras to make 3D films, just like the one these terrified children are watching. Maybe it's a film about school lunches. Boom, 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 boom. How 3D works. Hold a finger up in front of your face. Close one eye and look at it. Then close the other and look again. Your finger appears to jump to one side. That's because each eye view objects from a slightly different angle. Your brain blends the images from which from each eye together, which is why we see things in 3D. To make a flat picture appear three-dimensional, a picture is taken, then the camera is moved slightly and another picture is taken from a different angle, just like the images seen by each eye. Both photos are printed on the same piece of paper, one colored red and the other blue. With the help of special glasses, you can see the 3D effect. These glasses have a red lens and a blue one. With three-dimensional glasses, with, with three-dimensional or 3D, glasses, pictures, really try to take picture. Really try to take shape. With three-dimensional or 3D glasses, pictures really start to take shape. These glasses have a red lens and a blue one. Looking through the red lens, the red picture seems to disappear, so only the blue one can be seen, and vice versa. With each eye seeing a slightly different picture, the effect is, 3D. It's magic. There's a new way of seeing 3D images without making a spectacle of yourself wearing 3D glasses. It's called Magic Eye and was invented by American Tom Bosset. Magic Eye pictures produced by a computer naturally encourage each eye to look at a different part of the picture. Your brain puts the two together, producing weird and wonderful 3D images. It's more difficult to see magic eye images than traditional 3D pictures, and it can take a lot of concentration. Some people give up before they get the picture. Look closely, and you may see a picture within the picture. It's magic, magic eye. Pure genius. The computer, history's brainiest invention, the first automatic calculator, Babbage's 1833 difference engine. It almost began when British mathematician and inventor Charles Babbage, 1791 to 1871, drew up plans for his analytical engine in 1830s. 
It was to be the first computer capable of complex calculations and would be driven by thousands of cogs and gears. Babbage spent the last 37 years of his life trying to build this masterpiece, but the technology was beyond him. Now he is famous for coming this close to inventing the computer. Easy PC. The essential parts of the modern computer are diodes, transistors, and silicone chips. Without these, the computer would never have been invented. But it took decades for all the pieces to fit together. In 1946, the first computer weighed in at over 30 tons and contained 18,000 valves. But luckily, as technology has grown, computers have shrunk. Transistors and silicone chips paved the way for the microprocessor, the first computer circuit to fit on a single silicone chip. And in 1975, the very first personal computer, PC, was sold. It was named the Altar after a planet in Star Trek. Your logical captain. Bits and PCs, the world's largest computers, are called monsters. They can work around 800 times faster than a speed PC. From Pac Man to Sonic, video game design has leaped forward. Hack Attack. They may be miracle machines most of the time, but computers do have their drawbacks. Since so much information can be held on just one disk, the dedicated criminal could steal a lot with just a little effort. Hackers can gain access to a company's computers via a telephone line, crack the entry passwords, and steal the secret data. One telephone company was alleged to have hacked into the federal government's computers to read confidential information and use it to gain a business contract worth $25 billion. Game on! Video games are not the most educational thing about computers, but they're certainly the most fun. You may be familiar with all the latest games from Giants, Sega, and Nintendo, but what about Pong? Pong was the name of the first video game, a basic electronic version of table tennis. Pong was created in 1972 by a university student in Utah who installed the one and only version in a local bar. Soon, more people were visiting the bar to play Pong than to have a drink. Two years later, his company, Atari, went on to produce Home Pong, first computer game for the home. Atari later created Pac-Man. The Japanese then chipped in with Space Invaders. The computer game's invasion had begun. The first computer weighed over 30 tons. As technology has grown, computers have shrunk. This microprocessor circuit is the size of a fingernail. A Cray 2 supercomputer, one of the most powerful computing devices in the world. Bits and PCs. There are over 50 million PCs in use around the world. Take a bite. State of the art computer animation. It's a work of art without a paintbrush. It's Reboot, the world's first 100% computer generated animation. The groundbreaking British TV series was dreamed up by a team of British animators called The Hub 10 years ago. Up until recently, the technology didn't exist to bring the characters to life. Then came Softimage, the same computer software package that created the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park. This allowed The Hub to develop their own software to complete the revolutionary reboot, a totally new experience in virtually 3D animation. Now the sky's the limit for computer animators, with designs on the future. Who knows, soon every cartoon could look as cool as Reboot. It takes the Reboot team nearly a month to produce each episode. The sound for each episode takes 200 hours to create using state-of-the-art technology. Bob, Dot, and Enzo, the computer dog, battle against the mainframe viruses in Reboot, the world's first completely computer-generated animation. Get the picture. Animated film first came to life in the 19th century, but it took a Hollywood animator named Walt Disney, 1901 to 1966, to really get the reels in motion. Disney's first film with sound was Steamboat Willie in 1928, starring a character called Mortimer Mouse, later renamed Mickey. The Radical Rodent was to become a major star, and although many have followed Mickey, even crucial creations like Reboot's Bob have a long way to go in the fame stakes. Picture this. Don't 
don't just look at the pictures, become part of them. Virtual reality takes computer images to a new dimension. Instead of just watching pictures on a screen, you virtually become part of them with the help of a computer gener a computer program visor and movement sensors. You not only watch the action, but you can interact with it. Whether you're aiming to win points in a computer game or taking the controls of a flight simulator, the possibilities of virtual the possibilities for virtual reality are virtually endless. From design to reality, most people think of virtual reality as an invention of the 1990s, but it was first proved possible back in 1958. Then in 1962, American inventor Ivan Sutherland designed an interactive computer graphics system called Sketchpad. He went on to create the first 3D head-mounted display, but it was so heavy that it had to be suspended from the ceiling. The first workable and wearable headset was designed in 1985 for NASA. It was pieced together using many televisions and a motorbike helmet. The public started to sit up and take notice, but it wasn't until recently that the hype really got going. Now that systems are becoming cheaper to produce, VR, may, VR soon may become as common as TV. Who knows, maybe you could take the starring role in an action-packed adventure without even leaving the comfort of your armchair. Turn on, tune in, and join in. Virtual reality literally puts you in the picture. At the McDonnell Douglas Training Corporation in St. Louis, Missouri, pilots use VR flight simulators to train in safety and experience all the turns, climbs, rolls, and hovers of the real thing. It'll never work. Not all inventions are blueprints for success. Some are just plain silly. Isn't it annoying when peas fall off your fork? That's why William Heath Robinson, 1872 to 1944, invented this handy machine. His interesting and elegant apparatus designed to overcome once and for all the difficulties of conveying green peas to the mouth. It's just one of a collection of snappy contraptions that have secured him a place in the history books. Heath Robinson is the king of silly inventions, but funnily enough, the bulk of his crazy designs never made it past the drawing board. They were intended to be wacky illustrations rather than serious blueprints. It's a shame, really. His spaghetti stretcher and his apparatus for putting square pegs into round holes could have been very useful. Heath Robinson's Green Pea Transporter <laughs> is it a car? Is it a boat? Is it a plane? No, it's all three. Amazingly, the idea didn't take off and neither did the machine. All my own work, all these inventions were patented or registered so that no one else could take the credit for the idea. Designed to solve Britain, Britain's traffic problems, the Sinclair C5 rolled into production in 1985. Com capable of traveling at a not very speedy 20 miles per hour, the battery and pedal powered tricycle did so, but not well or for long. Within two months, the C5 was defunct. Strange but true, some of history's other unbelievable inventions, American Thomas Ferry, Invented the Acme Mustache Guard in 1901. He said it was to prevent the lodgment of food thereon while eating. The chocolate album was patented in 1903 by German firm Gerbrutter Stahlwerk. Not surprisingly, it didn't go to the top of the charts or break any invention records. The chocolate medicine spoon wasn't a big success either when it was invented in 1937. Children realized they could pour off the medicine and eat the spoon. In 1910, Alden L. McMurdy, an American inventor, came up with a woman's hat that blew bubbles, a striking novel scenic effect, he called it. In 1976, an inventor from Singapore, Sai Kong Kwan, patented a device to prevent planes being hijacked. A large ball bearing was strapped into the hands of every passenger to stop them from holding a gun. But the father of all eccentric inventors must be Englishman Arthur Pedrick. He had the brainwave of laying a pipeline from the North Pole to the Sahara Desert. By rolling snowballs down it, he reckoned he could supply melted snowball water to the Sahara. Hmm. Put a spring in your step with a spring walker. It's 
just the thing for a stroll around the park, but running for the bus could have disastrous effect. Pieced together from scrap metal and an old motorcycle engine, Pickles Takes to the Air was created to raise charity money. Did it work? When pigs fly. From the wheel to the wheel, the dynamic dinosphere of 1932 revolved around the driver and sped along at nearly 30 miles per hour. As it was powered by electricity, it was certainly less air polluting than other cars of its era. Even so, it didn't exactly roll off the production line. It's like a giant tire with a person inside of it. Hmm.